Hello there, my name is Michael and this is Michael Helwig Interiors. Welcome if you're here for the first time and welcome back if you're a returning guest. I appreciate you coming back to spend some more time with me. I'm a design pro and I talk a lot about small spaces, small rooms with tricky and awkward layouts. And this is basically where I share all of my thoughts on how I decorate and arrange little rooms with not so little challenges. So if you have a little room with a not so little challenge, well then you're in the right place. So this video is a little bit different than the things that I've been doing for the last couple of weeks. I write a blog and then I do a video that kind of coincides with the blog. And it's going to be that same sort of a format in, in, in essential ways. But what I'm going to do that's a little bit different is I'm going to do a podcast video sort of mashup that's going to, um, you know, kind of give me a little bit more of a different layer on things. I'm just trying to kind of stretch my creative legs a little bit and to see what's going to work and what's not going to work. I don't know. We're going to find out. Uh, but really what we're going to talk about today is 10 incredible expert tips that will elevate your small home to the next level. What I'm going to do is I'm going to link out to other designers that are in different focus areas and I'm going to see what they have to say about decorating spaces. Now, not particularly small spaces, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how I can sort of parlay their advice into the small space arena. You know, no man is an island, and so you need a little bit of advice and some inspiration from other people's every once in a while. So that's basically what it is all about for me today. So first up is Michelle Gage from Michelle Gage Interior Design. And I was torn as to uh, picking two of her blog posts because they're all so good, but I landed on two that I think are really pertinent for my fellow small space dwellers. Now Michelle's bio page on her website or her about page says that Michelle Gage is a Philadelphia based interior designer with an affinity for playful prints and whimsical designs. Her career began as a buyer for Anthropology Home, where she was tasked with selecting everything from art to antiques to decorative textiles. In 2015, Michelle embarked on her own and founded Michelle Gage Interiors. So the first space that I'm going to refer to with Michelle is going to be about her personal laundry room space. And it is pretty much, I did it for a self-indulgent reason because this space that she came up with is pretty much the exact same footprint as my mudroom slash laundry room space. And I just found the information so great and it was just so beautiful. The end result is so beautiful uh, that I'll put up on the screen too. You'll be able to see kind of a render of what the space looks like, but let's get into what she was doing with the laundry room space. She makes such perfect points about when to take a sludge hammer to areas and when to pump the brakes. Honestly, I feel that her advice could absolutely transfer to other areas and not just for a laundry room. Michelle writes, we knew that the washer and dryer had yet to find their forever home. Our plan was always to move them upstairs and had been eyeing a pair of closets, one in the hall and one in an adjacent bedroom to transform into the laundry room of our dreams. Our intention was to knock down the wall in between the two and open the space up to essentially one large closet. Initially, we were calling this space the laundry room, but in actuality, it was much more of the scale of a laundry closet. As we played with the floor plan and the new opening, we quickly realized all of our laundry room dreams would require knocking down additional walls and potentially coming into a nearby bedroom. We weren't willing to shrink that space and therefore settled on what made the most sense. Next up, Michelle Gage talks about creating a layered living room. Now, I've said this many times on my blog, and I never miss the chance to tell my clients one of the best ways to make your home feel interesting and alive is to layer your decor. Michelle takes this approach and elevates it to the next level by getting personal. Now, in this post, Michelle says, I'm often asked what the secret to finishing off any space is, and stuff is the answer. In order to make your home feel lived in and layered, you need items of various textures, materials, and sizes to fill it. Think metals, ceramics, and glass. When we style client projects, we mix in our vintage and curated items with the homeowner's personal prized possessions to create a completely custom look. I think this advice is essential for any size home, especially small homes. So next up, we have Shivanda Gardner from SG Style. Now, I love this woman's style so much. Her website is just jam-packed full of all kinds of great stuff. The thing that kind of drew me into her was her story about moving into a smaller home with her husband and family a few years back and her, her struggle with trying to figure out what to bring and what not to bring. So the whole, you know, 
the whole downsizing of your things is a real, real challenge for a lot of people. And so Shivanda kind of shares this a little bit in this post. And let me tell you, she doesn't lose any of her mojo after moving into this house. She still is beautiful. But the struggle was not so much into the downsizing, but was getting rid of her stuff. And because she's a designer and she curates beautiful things for a living, this made it a little bit tough for her. So when you go to Shivanda's website, you can go right into her about page. And the first thing it says is in the summer of 2014, my family and I ditched our cookie cutter builder grade larger house for a little bungalow half its size. Thus began our journey into downsized life. Every day is a lesson in adjustment, living intentionally and being happy with less space. This blog serves as a space for me to not only share our story, but also to share my passion for design, travel, gardening, personal style, and inspiring ideas for living large and smaller spaces. Woman after my own heart for this one. So the blog post that I'm going to write about for Shivanda's site today is her, her post about carving out some space for all the things, which I think is great, especially for smaller spaces, having, you know, designated areas for different things or, you know, just having the options of putting things different places is very important. Now, Shivanda says the number one piece of advice I give to people when they ask for an easy way to maximize space where it's limited is to use your walls and ceilings. There are so many ways to capitalize on vertical space that I think it gets overlooked. Where you can't spread out, try going up. In our home, I've put our walls to good use in many places, including opting for wall sconces instead of traditional table or floor lamps in the living room. Well, how brilliant is that? Isn't that great? So say, for example, you have smaller end tables or no room for end tables next to the sofa in the living room because your, your room is small, your wall might be very small and you don't have any room for, for table lamps or floor lamps. Putting sconces on the wall, holy cow, isn't that brilliant? It doesn't take up any floor space. And when Shivanda says, instead of going out, go up, that's, that's a wonderful use of space on a wall, don't you think? So next up, we have Donna Hoffman from Interiors by Donna Hoffman. Now, Donna is a luxury interior designer, and she pretty much design pours out of her like water from a tap. She leaves nothing to chance. And basically what she does is she applies all of the finer details to the whole room. So small rooms don't have to be boring or drab. And I encourage you to take a lot of the things that Donna says to heart and to apply them to your small space and watch the volume turn up to wow. So when you look at Donna's bio page on her website, on her about page, it says Donna had a unique beginning in design. She was a design client 20 years ago before studying design at Parsons and Temple. Donna believes that experiencing the client side of the table profoundly affected her by making her acutely aware of the normal stresses design clients face. So the post that I'm going to reference from Donna's site is all about the little details that make a big effect, a wow effect, actually. And this is all about creating pieces that add excitement and establishing a rhythm for things in the room like your fabric and decor and approaching those details strategically so that you can get an impact that is unexpected and also very, very exciting. So in Donna's wow effect post, she writes, Color, texture, and line help establish a rhythm in a room. Adding even a clean band or simple flourish to an otherwise simple or solid fabric adds a sense of movement. Leather binding around the edge of a rug or nail head border on a stair runner aren't things that you just see in retail design shops, but they're gorgeous features that seem so clear to me as a luxury interior designer. Details and rhythm go hand in hand. But the end result is always amazing, beautiful, and spaces feel as wonderful as they look. That is rhythm at work. Couldn't agree more. That is a really perfect way to think about doing little detail things in a room. So even if you have like an area rug that you need to embellish a little bit with maybe a custom border to it, something that you can do maybe DIY yourself, adding a border around a lampshade, it's taking nail head trim and applying it not only to stair runners, but maybe onto furniture or an ottoman that you might have reupholstered or it might just need a little bit of an embellishment. So those little details are really what's going to make a space shine. And it doesn't matter if it's a large space or a small space. So next up, we have Igor Josipovic Kempfer from Happy Interior Blog. 
So when Igor moved into his Berlin apartment, he found that he had a very small master bedroom without any storage. So he decided to create an entire wall's worth of uh, a wardrobe out of IKEA PAX wardrobes. And he did some customization to them to make them even more spectacular. So I'm not going to lie, this one was the one that excited me, one of, the, one of the ones that excited me the most. And I actually went in and I measured my bedroom closet to see if I could rip it out myself and put this in instead. It is that good and it's very, very inspiring. So let's take a look. But before we start with uh, Igor's advice, I want to introduce you to him via his about page on his website. So when you go to his blog and you read his about page, it starts off by saying, when I decided to start Happy Blog, Happy Interior Blog in 2011, my main mission was to bring more happiness to our homes and lives. Little has changed ever after. I strongly believe in the power of happiness brought to us through a beautiful and personal home, inspiring travels, and a healthy lifestyle with plants and surrounding nature. With Happy Interior Blog, I aim to raise the awareness for the space we live in. A home is not simply a space, it is our personal haven, a visual identity of ourselves and a shelter to nourish our happiness. That is so fantastic. So the blog post that I'm going to refer to for Igor is Berlin Styling Bedroom. And as I mentioned before, it's, it's a room that he moved into after moving from, I think it was Munich, and he moved to Berlin. Uh, so he brought minimal things with him to this apartment, and he found that he needed a little bit more storage in the bedroom. So what he did was he took this IKEA PAX wardrobe, and he basically embellished it a little bit, had it covered by a company called Reform Copenhagen. And it's basically recovered and restyled, and it looks so magnificent. Magnificent. Out of everything in this blog post, I think that's the thing that kind of grabbed me the most is that it was such an ingenious amount of space that he used and that it was so perfect that he kind of like shows you also how to go into styling a bedroom and really what to do. He's got a very, very solid philosophy of how to approach design and he actually walks you through the whole process from step by step to get to the end result so that you can have a serene and beautiful cozy bedroom, which I think is so important, don't you? So when you go to Igor's blog post, the thing that you're going to see is a quote from him probably in the middle of the blog post. And it says, probably the most crucial part was finding a new wardrobe. This time the wardrobe needed to be spacious enough for two persons, but it should also not be too dominant in the room. Finding a big and stylish wardrobe can be daunting though. My solution was a combination, an IKEA PAX wardrobe structure and interior covered with stylish fronts by Reform Copenhagen. So let's unpack this for just a little bit more and I'll kind of give you another idea of what I think is a good way to go about doing something like this. So say you have a larger piece, um, like for example, my, my uh, thing that's in back of me here, I have bookshelves and then I have this like storage cabinet in between. Now they were completely different finishes. And what I did with the one in between is I painted it white so that it matched the two on the end. And basically what that did was it gave me something that looked very cohesive and put together, but it has nothing, they have nothing to do with one another. They are not even from the same era. I have a mid-century cabinet in between and then two kind of more contemporary uh, bookcases on the other side and on the outside of that. So really goes to kind of show you that you can have one little thing and you can kind of embellish it a different way and create a different cover on it to make it look a little bit different in a room. So basically if you have a room that has all dark furniture, why not try refinishing things? That's It's actually not as hard as you think it is and or you can paint things darker or paint things lighter to go into a room so it just depends on what your your design style is and how you want to go about maybe taking something from one iteration to a completely other iteration so next up we have ann lowengart from ann lowengart interiors and her blog post is called the finishing touch details that make the design so what I really like about Anne Lowengart's approach to the design process is that she really goes into the details and she, she gets personal with the details too, which is really nice. Uh, this blog post in particular, you're going to see a couple of like three different projects that she's completed and she's going to kind of explain to you what she did and how she made them into a, a personalized space. The first one is all about an entryway and she talks about how the jewelry of the room becomes like the hardware. So for example, in this particular iteration, it's the lock on the door and it has a beautiful silver plate to it. Um, it also, she goes into talking about how the plumbing fixtures in you know, the home can really become the jewelry of the space as well. So it's all those little details that you shouldn't really forget 
when you're considering, you know, doing the design of your space or doing a makeover in your space, because all those little details are what's really going to bring everything to life. Green lacquered, beautiful green, green lacquered uh, front entryway in a home that I just thought was so gorgeous. It's a very high gloss kind of finish on the walls. So in a smaller space, it just really made everything pop. And then there's a huge contrast between the furniture and everything like that too. So that is another part of the post to pay attention to. The last part of it is all about this gentleman that has a, um, a stadium seat that he had from probably when he was a kid or maybe he collected it at some point. And she had put the stadium seat into a, um, a plastic container on the wall. So it was kind of like a finishing touch of the wall, and like a focal point in the space too. So it's a personalized detail that made this gentleman's room like completely personalized and also very, very impactful as well. So when you visit Anne's website, you're going to read a little bit more about her design process. She says, while at Anne Lowengart Interiors, we pay close attention to the fundamentals of design, including space, line, form, light, color, texture, and pattern. We feel it is the dressmaker details of a room that make the design. No feature or accessory is too small for Anne and not to incorporate into the overall plan for the interiors. Hardware and plumbing fixtures become the jewelry of the home. The trim and the piping on upholstery pillows and lampshades enhance the color scheme. Objects, either precious or personal, add the finishing touches. You know, it's so true, especially in small houses, that it's crucial to spend time creating the story behind, you know, what you want to communicate with your style. Because it's an opportunity to have all kinds of gestures with the fixtures and to, you know, embrace the finishes and to make the space just really, really pop and very personalized. Um, it's remember that the details really make the design come to life. And that's really what Anne, Anne Lowengard is all about. And I think that this is a spectacular uh, post to get inspired by. Next up, we have John McLean from John McLean Designs. If you go to John's about page on his website, uh, you'll read about him and it says, John McLean is an accomplished interior designer, speaker, writer, and on-air contributor who has turned his lifetime passion for interior design into an opportunity to do the same for others. As a young man, John's interest in creating beautiful spaces was sparked by his family's talent in home building and renovations. And he's got a post called Foyer Fundamentals, The Three Basic Elements. And basically what John is going to talk about in this post is how to make your foyer a much more functional space. So even in smaller, smaller areas, you can still get a lot of utilization by following three basic rules. And that is a place to stand, a place to land, and a place to store. So basically it's, you gotta have room to, to be able to move into the space. So it's, you're not kind of like crowded around into a space. You gotta have a place to maybe sit down. It would be great to have like maybe a stool or a small bench or a chair in a small foyer to be able to sit down and put shoes on, to, to put your purse down on, to you know tie, your, tie up your shoes or put your socks on, or whatever, whatever has to happen in that space. Maybe it's a place for the kids to like throw their stuff underneath the bench or the chair while they're taking their shoes off to run you know through the house after school or before school. And then also a place to store things. So even if it's just a small cabinet or something that has drawers in it, that would be ideal too. So those are the three things to, to remember about a, a foyer and I think that John McLean hits it right on the head. So even in the smallest amount of space you still have the functionality to stand, land, and store as well. And then John also says in this post about foyers, quote, like the cover of a best-selling novel, the entryway sets the tone for the rest of your home. It's important to reflect the homeowner's personality while not overwhelming the senses to create an atmosphere of comfort and serenity. Even with a small space, you can still make a big impact by utilizing every square foot. Very good advice. So now we have Shannon Voss from Voss Creative. When you go to Shannon's website and read about him on his about page, it says, Shannon has always been fascinated by design, stemming from his early years staring up at buildings in wonder to spending 10 years in the construction industry. Having spent almost a decade traveling and experiencing diverse cultures, Shannon has developed a passion for all forms of design. Now, the more interesting stuff about him is this finally led him to Sydney prior to winning Channel 9's The Block Glass House. He studied and gained distinctions in interior design. And he says, quote, winning the most popular and quite honestly, the most grueling renovation show in Australia has given me an insight not too many people see. I'm very lucky to have been given this opportunity, end quote. His appreciation of light, texture, and shape saw he and his brother excel in the show and move to, on to bigger and bolder things. And Shannon writes about a favorite topic of mine, and that is 
three different types of rooms. So we have a long rectangular room, we have an L-shaped room, and we have the square room. Now each one of those types of rooms comes with their own set of little bit of tricky or awkward places to get tripped up on. And they're, they're hard to decorate around, they're hard to arrange, like for example, the L-shaped room where one begins and one ends. That's, that's a common thing that I hear quite a bit. The long rectangular room is usually, of course, longer than it is wide. So finding furniture to fit into that space is a challenge. And then square-shaped rooms, you know, sometimes you have a doorway, sometimes you have a closet in the room. And then you, you know, say so for example, if it's a bedroom, what size bed fits into this space. I've gone into that quite a bit in a lot of my different blogs. I did a post on a dining room, which was eight foot by eight foot. So I know a little bit about this as well. Uh, Shannon actually gives you a really great article to read that was originally published in a magazine called Inside Out Magazine. And basically what it is, is when you go to this particular blog site, you have to click through to the PDF that is linked through that magazine because that's where all of these tips are. And believe me, it's worth it. It's a wonderful, wonderful resource. And Shannon's gonna be very, very generous and give you lots of things to think about. So we'll, we'll kind of start off a little bit. There's a quote that I think is really funny on this particular post and it's prior, prior, proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> it's a tongue twister. It's hard to say, but it's so true. You have to plan things out. Otherwise you're going to, you know, have something that's going to fizzle and it's just not going to be what you want it to be. It's not going to hit all the functional functional marks. It's not going to hit the aesthetic marks. So you've got to plan out your space. So that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I encourage you to go check out this uh, particular um, post because it's great. And now we have Monica Wilcox of M. Wilcox Design. So when you go to Monica's website, you hit the little tab that says Meet Monica. That's her about page. And it says interior designer Monica Wilcox is an expert in delivering unique design with functionality in mind. Her award-winning design firm creates gorgeous interiors that also offer livable style with a California twist. So the post that I want to dig into for Monica's blog is called Understanding Scale is Fundamental. And this is incredibly important when it comes to small spaces because the visual size of things coupled with the physical size of things really could trip you up in a space. You can unintentionally make a space feel incredibly crowded uh, just by not paying attention to how things feel and look in the space. So for example, if you have a coffee table in a small space, maybe consider doing a glass top coffee table because it's gonna take up less visual space than a solid piece, like a solid maple, uh, maybe it's a solid marble table, or maybe it's a solid block of wood that you can't really see through in a smaller space is really gonna kind of close things in. So you gotta kind of think about how you can visually expand a space, and that's really what this post is all about. So Monica says in her post, imagine how all the pieces are going to fit together in the room. This is especially helpful when choosing a coffee table, see? Visual scale is a key element in finding the one of your needs. If seating takes up a great deal of space, look for a coffee table that is visually less weighty, such as ones that are glass tops or open underneath or in an unexpected shape like round, soft, rectangular, or oval. I say heck yeah to all of those things. You know, I always say rounded edges are so much more easier to move around than squared off edges. So especially in a small spot, in a small space, like say for example, you have a long rectangular living room like we just talked about a minute ago with Shannon Voss's post. A long rectangular living room, you can't really have a big square chunky coffee table in it because you're going to take up, you know, a lot more physical space than you need to. You have to also consider that your sofa is going to pop off the wall a good, you know, 35 to 42 inches most of the time. And then when you add a coffee table that could be like four foot by four foot, you're just, you know, that's the whole room. That is the entire width of the room. So you really got to do something kind of long and skinny. So why not do something with rounded edges, like maybe an oval shape, or maybe you're doing something like a kidney shape when it comes to something maybe that has a little bit more of a mid-century modern type of twist to it. You got to think about those kind of things because that's what's really going to make your room a little bit more successful than if you just sort of put everything in and hope for the best. You got to kind of plan things out. So the next blog that I want to reference is from a group of bloggers, actually a group of women who have this company called Affordable Interior Design. Now, 
this company is great because they are a virtual interior design company, something very close to my heart. They have a podcast and they also do online classes that teach people how to, you know, get the look for less. And, and it's a great resource for uh, for you if you're looking into that kind of information. So when you go to their about page, they have a nice little blurb that says, quote, we are a small team of superstars. Our designers have worked at high-end places, Armani, Tom Felicia Incorporated, the Metropolitan Museum, Soho Grand Hotel, etc., where we shopped and spent thousands on furnishings for our exclusive boutiques for our clients. But that's not where we shop for ourselves. We translated Lux looks into Lux looks to fit our budgets at places like West Elm, Overstock, and Ikea. In 2005, our founder had an aha moment. Let's do this for our friends and family and everyone we know. And just like that, affordable interior design was born. Our passion is creating upscale looks for much less. So the post that I wanna reference from this group is called Shoe In, Seven Clever Ways to Include a Shoe Cabinet in Your Closet. So this one was a game changer because it took some incredibly tight spaces and made the most sense when it came to shoe storage. Um, I'm just going to read from my from my blog post because I think that this is going to encapsulate everything that I want to say about this post because it you know it, it's it's really good. So um, we all have them. We can't live without them. Shoes. But shoes are one of the most clutter causing items we can own. I'll say it, if you pile your shoes right inside your door, you're not only potentially ruining some of those expensive items in your wardrobe, but you're making your house look a mess. When I came across Affordable Design's blog, I zoomed right in on their post about the seven clever, way, clever ways to include a shoe cabinet in your closet. And I most definitely shrieked out loud because it's one of the most game-changing things that I've come across. Let me tell you, it's like Carrie Bradshaw swooped in and made magic out of madness. Don't think your space or your closet can have a dedicated shoe cabinet? Well, naysayers, check this post out because you'll see exactly how to change your shoe storage in the most imaginative and beautiful way, closet or no closet, no lie. So, and I really stand behind that because it is a very, very clever post. Now, I don't wanna give away all their secrets, but there are some really cool things in there that you would never even imagine in a million years that you could do with shoe storage from things like putting an actual shoe cabinet, like a, like a, like a china cabinet inside of your closet, which I thought was pretty ingenious. Having posts up on the wall, if you don't have a closet, it's like an open display where you can actually make your shoes the art in the space. Now, I'm not gonna ruin it for you. I really want you to go read this post because I think it's really spectacular. Now, when they had a little blurb about it on their website, I'm gonna to read to you what they say about their particular post here. And it says, it's your night out and you don't know for how long. You have the perfect pair of shoes in mind for a gorgeous time under the stars sipping mojitos, but when you pull your coveted lemon yellow leather stilettos from under the bed, you find that the left one has a deep crease and the right one has an indelible spot of dirt that could only rival any Roshark test. So we've all been through that, right? Well, I don't particularly wear heels, but I've got nice shoes. And if you have your shoes stuffed up into crevices and corners all over the place, you're destroying expensive, probably the most expensive part of your wardrobe, right? So you wanna be able to take those shoes and make them into something spectacular. Now you can do all kinds of different things. And these ladies go into great deal with what to do with your shoe storage to make it spectacular and, and, and just beautiful. Now for my last blog post that I'm going to reference, I'm going to stick with the affordable interior design ladies and I'm going to go in with one of their other blog posts that as I was scrolling through, I came across and I thought this is right up my alley. It is called Space Jam, 660 square feet of an apartment. Okay, so let me lay this out for you a little bit. This particular post is about two people and two children living in 666, 660 square feet. Now, I wrote a post a while back on a studio apartment in New York City that was 224 square feet, which is, which is pretty small, and that was for one person. So if we do the math on 660, everybody, it's going to be 165 square feet for each person. Now, that's, that's really great. That's really crazy. Now, yes, maybe the parents have a little bit more space than the kids do, or maybe the kids have more space than the parents do. You don't know. So get into this post and you'll read all about it. But I can tell you that there are some incredibly ingenious ways that they went about laying out this space. So for example, you know, when we talk about using your vertical space instead of your horizontal space, this is the post that's really going to kind of lay that out in total 
total clarity for you. So uh, they have this one part of the post that is a bunk bed that's right inside their entryway that has a little play area underneath it. Now, if you have a small bedroom, this is a good idea to maybe think about doing a an elevated bed that could go up a little bit higher and then maybe having a desk that you could sit at underneath. Now, you don't have to stand up underneath the bed. So being able to sit at a desk underneath a bed on top might be a good use of space. So there's all kinds of different little tricks and tips that you can pick up from this particular blog post and I think it's fantastic. So you might imagine that a big part of this post is going to be multifunctional pieces that can do a couple of different purposes and just be the one piece of furniture. So for example, there is a uh, dining room table that's in the kitchen that they use as a prep space as well as a dining table. So having the ability to you know, be able to chop and prepare food on the table and then clean it up and then serve on the table is really essential for a space this size as well. And then staying with the same multifunctional idea, this couple has a sleeper chair in their living room. Now it's not a sleeper sofa, it's not a trundle bed, it's not a sleeper loveseat. It's a chair and a half that has a mattress that you pull out into a single like cot size bed that one person or a little kid could sleep in for a night or a weekend. So thinking about things that will give you everyday functionality like a chair in the living room and then being able to turn it into an extra sleeping bed for a night or a weekend is great because it gives you multifunctional and also gives you an economy of space too. So two in one, think about those kind of things as well. And another thing that I saw in this post that I thought was pretty ingenious was the use of space underneath an open staircase. Now this staircase happens to go up to probably a second loft area, smaller area probably upstairs. Uh, that doesn't take up the entire expanse of the apartment, but it is probably like a little loft area up there for like a bedroom or something, I would imagine. But the part that I thought was really ingenious was underneath that open staircase getting up to that level is a space that is a long table that has a couple of chairs. There's a few computer uh, stations there. There's also a, a sewing machine that I noticed there, and there's a gallery wall that kind of goes around in the space as well. So this is also a space that is in the, in the living room area, but it isn't part of the functional seating area of the living room. So it's also going to be considered probably like a dead space. Like what would you do with this space other than put something very useful there? Now you could put a cabinet in there, you could put a china cabinet in there, you could put up closed storage, bookshelves, whatever else, but that really doesn't give you multifunction and that's really what the whole idea of this post is. So having a desktop with a computer station, there's some storage in there and there's also the functionality for like a little sewing area in there for a sewing machine and whatnot. Uh, so it isn't just storage, it's actually a space to sit and do things for a specific purpose is another thing to really think about in smaller spaces. So there you have it, 10 incredible expert interior design tips to elevate your small home to the next level. Hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd love for you to like and subscribe for more uh, because every week on Sunday, I'm gonna release a new video. And if you like and subscribe, well, if you subscribe, you don't have to like, but I would appreciate it if you liked. But if you do subscribe, you will get a notification that I am uploading a video. So that will happen on Sundays. Might not be always the same time. It's gonna be sometime on Sunday. And then it looks like my buddy, Mark Marky over here has now decided to join us for our saying goodbye. Uh, she hasn't been here for most of the video. She's been sleeping in the other room. Now she's decided to come back in here. So that's cute. She likes to do that. Um, it's her house. I just live here, you know, or she lets me live here. I, I don't know how it works. There was a lot of stuff to unpack today, wasn't there? So there was all kinds of great tips for small spaces. Hope you really enjoyed hearing these 10 tips from these eight experts. I think that they're really wonderful. I got a lot of new kind of angles on different things. Some of the things that I read about um, that I kind of researched about, I should say, were things that I really knew about already, but different takes on them and different ways to kind of go about, um, you know, thinking about them for smaller spaces and how they can apply. I'd also love it if you go over to michaelhelliginteriors.com and read about the things that I write about, small spaces, awkward rooms, tricky layouts, all kinds of different things over on my blog. It's been going on since 2017, so there's a library of stuff that goes back for five or six years where you can kind of get into all types of different little things about small spaces and um, it's a great resource to go and check out. So thanks again for stopping by and have an amazing week. Until next time, keep your dreams big for your small spaces.